Okay. Can you hear me fine? Maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, so my name is Jonas Bonier. I'm the CTO of TypeSafe. What's this noise? Oh, that's it. Cool. Brute force. So my, my name is Jonas Bonier. I'm the CTO of TypeSafe. TypeSafe is the... Uh, is this, we call ourselves ourselves a scalability company. It's a company who who who, who provides the Scala programming language. As a layer on top of that, we have the Akka middleware, event-driven middleware for scale scaling up and out. And on top of that, we have the the Play web framework, and we have some some some, some other tools around that stack as well. So it's a full it's a full stack. Uh, solution that we provide. I'm going to talk about the middle layer here, Akka, which was a, pro a project that I founded uh, three years ago now. So as you can hear, I'm, I'm a little bit sore in my throat, and it's, it's actually, I actually have a, le le a legitimate reason for it. I, wa I wasn't just out drinking great Belgian beer and, and shouting at bars. I was actually at the national at the, at the brand new national Swedish arena watching Sweden beat England with four to two. All right, and it was and Slatan Ibrahimovic. I don't know if you're a football geek, like, but he did his Ibra Kadabra there, and he scored four goals. And I was just shouting so much with my son, so I almost lost my voice. I was actually pretty worried. But his last goal was so amazing, so I just I just have to show it to you. Actually, <laughs> you just can't miss this. This was actually in the 91st minute. So the game was sort of over. Sweden, Sweden leading with three, with three or two, and it's just so beautiful. What can you say, right? I'm, pr I'm proud to be Swedish. <laughs> so yeah, I got about four hours sleep, but it was so much worth it. Trust me. And now I'm here to talk about. Oh, okay, let's get to turn this off first. <laughs> That's true, yeah. But still, we, we beat them. So, Aka is actually, the, na the name Aka comes from a, from a beautiful mountain up in the northern part of Sweden that I had, I've had the pleasure to, to actually c conquer once. It's great skiing down, I'm a ski addict. It was, so it, that was the name I picked. It didn't have much hits on Google, and it was sort of the, the, acro the acronym of, of actor kernel, like mirrored, so to speak because I had the vision of building this, this sort of like mini or say lightweight mini kernel app server built based upon a, the actor paradigm. And uh, so I has sort of evolved beyond that vision now you can say, but, but one, of, one of the nice things that even though, even though Arc is built right on top of Scala and it has a great Scala API, it's, all, it's very, been very important from day one that we should have an up-to-date one by one mapping to Java API as well. And since most of you are probably Java developers, I'm going to talk about the Java API throughout this, this talk. <clears throat> the Scala API in some, in some way, in some places are a little bit more concise, but in some cases not that much actually either. So I think, I think it's sort of decent. It will become even slicker actually using Akka from Java when we have Java 8, because a lot of the sort of the boilerplate, clock, boilerplate code that you still have to write is, is around closures and having these lambdas and stuff that's going to come in in Java 8. I think that will simplify a lot. So you can just leverage what you know. You can later start looking at Scala if you like and if you find that appealing, right? But there's no really uh, sort of requirement to use Akka. I guess you across the industry. The, the, these are some of our, our production users that we have. And as you see, I'm, just, I'm not just showing this to, like, to, to brag, even though I, I think I, I'm pretty proud of all, of all, the, of all the, the current users that we have, but more to show you I mean, the diversity. Right? We have e-commerce, we, we have telecom, investment banking, mobile, um, and so, and uh, yeah, gaming, betting companies, so data simulations, and so the common, so tr the common sort of theme or trend across all of these industries is that the, they have a big need of, of high throughput, low latency, with with very high SLA levels, systems that can't stop. So re resilience is a big piece of the puzzle. Okay. 
<clears throat> and ACA is, is in, it, it's actually very, very lightweight. It's, 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 it's just a, a couple of megabytes jar. And then you can add, it's very modular, then you can add like functionality along the way as much as you need. People are using ACA uh, in, in Android, in Android devices and all the way up to, to the largest installation we have in production customers are more than 100 f f physical machine all running 12 cores. It's about 1,200 cores. And, and we've, uh, without any problems, I'm sure it goes beyond that, but I shouldn't exaggerate. That's, that's the biggest we've tested. But the important thing is that it scales both up and, uh, it scales both up and down, right? So you can use it for many, many different things. And, and I mean, the, the, this is already a quad core. The, this little uh, new Samsung Galaxy S3. So, so multi core is, is, here, is here to stay. And as you know, cloud computing is here to stay. And in my view, <clears throat> you shouldn't have to, this be like to think about, should, I mean, two different things when you think about if you want to scale up, I'm talking about scaling out on multi core or scale out in the real sense, meaning scaling out to multiple machines, they're both the same thing, right? If the processors are sitting in this, like just next to each other in the same physical box, or the processors just happen to live on two different machines, or five or 10, 100 different machines, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So, so we need abstractions that sort of abstracts across or over both of these things. And that's where ACA really shines. There's no difference in an ACA application if you run it on, this, on a single core box, a double core box, a quad core box, or like 100 physical machines with 12 core each. You don't change a single line in your program. Instead, all this, all this is driven through configuration. Okay? So it's a deployment step, it's, or, a, or that you, it's a deployment decision that you need to take when you deploy your application. What kind of topology will I want to deploy on right now, okay? And I think that is very important. That gives you a lot of productivity. <clears throat> so other things that ACA really helps with is, oops, I shouldn't touch this thing, sorry. Oops. Uh, manage less things like system overload, for example. It's doing automatic replication and distribution for fault tolerance and scalability. It allows you to program really at, at a higher level. That's, that's basically what it, what it tries to do. I think that historically, both multi-core, I mean, concurrent programming, parallel computing, and also distributed computing have been way too hard. This noise. I don't know why. That's, no. I don't know. Do you have another mic, or this is pretty annoying? Or it, my Yeah, <laughs> that's why it worked. Okay, just just take this off then. I hate I hate holding microphones like this, but it's probably better anyway. So it allows you to pro uh, it allows you to program at, at a high, at a higher level. Okay. So if you if you dump I mean, concurrent programming in in, in Java C plus plus or, di di or distributed computing etc. Through I mean the 80s and 90s and also the the early 2000s. Uh, you know that I mean it's, it's pretty it's pretty hard stuff, right? And it's very different if you want to use like POSIX threads or you want to use RPC mechanisms, use program with sockets. It's very different things, right? You just learn a lot of things to achieve uh, basically the same sort of use case, dealing with lots of customers, lots of data, lots of load. And I don't think that's right. I think it should be a unified abstraction for dealing with all of these things. And that's what ACA tries to provide. <clears throat> so it allows you to program at, at, a higher, at a higher level. So you never have to think about the plumbing, okay? Like shared mutable data, threads, logs, I mean, which, which thread access, what current data, what kind of data, at what, what point in time, and stuff like that. And the beauty is if you, if you live and breathe in the actor model that we will talk about, then all of these concurrency, low-level plumbing things becomes workflow. You lift the abstraction level up. And, and instead of thinking about plumbing, you think about how my message flow in the system. Okay? And then, as a side effect of that, 
you get very good CPU utilization, you get very, very, uh, I mean, scalable code, and code that also allows you to run across different machines, as we, as, we, as we will see, just by modeling your system as messages flowing in a non-blocking, asynchronous fashion, okay? And on top of that, I think actors are also very interesting in, the, in terms of resilience. Uh, that was actually one of the, you, pro, you, you probably heard about the Erlang programming language. Actors are way older than that. Actors are from the 70s, right? But Erlang adopted it in the 80s, not actually due to concurrency or due to distributed computing, but due to their superior failure model. It was used to, to write telecom switches. Where yeah, what do you call 911, right? Or 112, as it is in most of Europe. System can't fail, right? And actors prove to be a very, very good way of dealing with that. And we will take a look at that later. There's other stuff like being di being distributed by design is what I mean. But everything related to topology, how you should run your application, is actually something that is a, de you, that a decision you can take later. That's written in the configuration file, deployment descriptor, if you want to call it that, if you're like a JEE nuthead. Sorry about that. But, but actors and location are location transparent. That, that's the thing. It doesn't really matter where they are located. All you get, if you want to talk to an actor, you get a reference. And that reference can point to an actor running anywhere. It doesn't matter. It might happen to run in process, right? It might happen to run on another, in another data center. And what's really nice, since that is decoupled, as we will see later in code, the system can even optimize this at runtime. So uh, the ACA runtime actually can detect, and does so, can detect how the system is being used and optimize the, the system according to that. Okay. Moving actors closer to the context it's being used in, sometimes replicating actors on the fly to actually, because it can't keep up with load, it transforms itself to a, a router actor, a router actor, for example, and just spawns up five instances of himself doing round robin. Stuff like that is possible with this model. Okay. So I think you get something that's <clears throat> very suitable for the for, for, for cloud computing. And oops, sorry. And uh, other things that, that, that you get as part of the model, as I said, is adaptive load balancing and stuff like that. And you get, even more importantly, you, you get a system that is extremely loosely coupled. So that it's very flexible in terms of the design. Not only how you deploy your application, but also how systems interact with, uh, components interact with each other and so on. Which, which, is, which is very nice. So then, the big question is, how can we achieve, achieve this? Okay. Let's, let's use actors, okay? And, I'm, and I'm not talking about like, actors like John Goodman, even though we have, we have a standing movie session at the ACA headquarters office. Everyone is so, so really fanatic about this big, big, big Lebowski movie. If you haven't seen it, you should. But instead, actors, in, 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 in the sense I'm talking about now, is ACA's unit of code. Okay, that's a very simple way of looking at it. It can be anything, right? We will get down to specifics very soon. But you can see, you can look at it as a component, like an abstraction that does something. It encapsulates state and behavior. They are very similar to objects, actually. And, and yeah, you can also look at, look, look, look at them a little bit like, like JE serverless or session beans in the way that you have code and then you have a certain set of policy decisions that you can take and those are externalized into what was called a deployment descriptor. We, we just call it the application co configuration file. Okay, and, and as I've already touched er, just briefly earlier, it was, it was the whole model, the whole idea of actors was, was, is, is nothing new. It came out of, of a paper by Carl Hewitt in 1973. So <clears throat> if you go back to Carl Hewitt then, and a little bit back to academia, and, and look at what does he mean when he, what, he, what did he mean when he defined actors? Okay, it's actually not that hard. So according to Carl, to, to Carl Hewitt, 
An actor is a, is a unit, unit of computation, okay, that embodies processing, storage, and communication. This is very much like an object. You know, we have state, that is the storage, you have behavior, that is the processing, but you also have a very explicit model for communication. And as we'll see, that model for communication is message passing style, is non-blocking and is asynchronous, and that's what gives actors a lot of nice traits, okay? So, we have three axioms when it, when it, when it comes to actors. We can create new, let's say, first, when, a message, when an actor receives a message, it can do three things. It can create new actors, okay, and you start using them. It can send messages to actors that he knows, can be the ones that he just created or other guys that he was passed the reference to. <clears throat> and also, he can also do a third thing that's very interesting. And he can change the way he behaves for the next upcoming message, okay? So he can, he can actually redefine his own behavior. And that's, that, that makes actors extremely flexible and extremely dynamic. This is a great talk, by the way. I, 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 I made, a, made it the vanity URL here. This is a talk where Carl Hewitt talks with Eric Meyer. It's on Channel 9. I learned a lot from just hearing him talk about uh, how he looks at one actress. That's something I can recommend you to do if you're interested in in more details about that. <clears throat> so now if, if we're going to take a look at the actors from the, from the, from the lens on these, of these three axioms, okay? First, we of course need to define an actor. That, that's the first step, the step zero. But then we're going to take a look at how can we create an actor, how can we send messages to an actor, and how can we then redefine ourselves for the next message that's going to come. And the fourth one, that, that, that's not part of Carl Hewitt's original model, but I think it's one of the most interesting ones, is how actors deal with failure. And that's the fourth thing, supervision, okay? It will be clear to you why I call it supervision in a second, okay? So if we start by defining an actor, this is actually, here we actually define more than an actor. We start by defining the message that an actor can, res can respond to. That is, the, that is the, the public API of an actor, okay? That's this thing. Oh, my laser pointer doesn't work. Yeah, that's the greeting up there. So, you should, you sh you should somehow make your messages being able to be, 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 be sent across the wire. Serialization, Java serialization is the easiest thing to do, but it's nothing I recommend. You should think through more thoroughly how you want that to be done, right? There are better serialization schemes than that. And the, if, you've, okay, if you know that you will ne never ever run an actor system on more than one machine, you don't need that. But you lose a lot of the flexibility in the model if, 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 uh, if messages can't travel across the wire, because that, then, then you can't like on demand, start adding new nodes and have the system scale out, okay. So it's a very simple message. It just has state who, who sent the greeting, who said, who, who said the greeting. And then we have an actor, okay. And in Java, it's just a regular class, right? We say greeting actor extends untyped actor. The reason for untyped is because we also have something called typed actors that uh, is not the original type of actors, and I'm not going to talk anything about them here today, you can look them up later, but that's sort of for historic reasons we call them untyped. So the important thing, extends untyped actor, and then we, we have to do one more thing, and that is we have to implement the, the receive method, and that's where we add the processing, okay? This happens to be a stateless actor. Actors are often stateful, I'd say, if you only have stateless actors, you, you, you miss, you're missing out on almost all the good stuff, I think. If you only have stateless actors, then you can just use threads anyway. There's nothing to worry about. The nice thing with actor model is that it's a safe way of, have, of using mutable state in your system. Okay, so, you can, so you can easily add mutable state in this actor, have it run concurrently, and don't worry because it's protected by the, by the sort of the core fundamental pr pr principles of the actor model. <clears throat> so this, this on receive takes the message, picks into what kind of message it is, and then acts, acts upon it, okay? 
If you want to take a look, and we'll have some logging here, that's not really important. If you want to take a look at this from Scala perspective, you can see that it's, it's, it fits a little bit better with the, with the actor model. It's a little bit shorter, but it basically does the same thing. Uh, Scala has something called pattern matching that makes the receive block a lot easier to write, okay, and to understand and maintain and everything that you that we do as, as software developers, but, but ba it has the same semantics, okay? Basically, it allows you to, I can't, oh, this laser pointer doesn't work. It basically says case greeting, and you see in this greeting, what we can do, then we can match on the message, and there we can immediately also p and go in and grab the actual state that the greeting message has. There's no reason to cost to something and do some getter method or public fields or anything. You just go in and grab whatever you want the who there, and then you can use the who in the, after this arrow. Okay, so that's, that's one, one very simple example of, Scho of Scala's pattern matching and why it fits, it fits very well to how actors are used. But you can use it just as good from Java, just a couple of lines, more lines of code. Same thing with messages. Scala has something called case classes in which it automatically generates getters and setters, it, it generates hash code and equals, it generates uh, copy methods, and they are, are by default immutable. Okay, so you get a lot of stuff just generated for you when you use case classes. And it also generates everything you need for pattern matching. Okay. But this, I think, is the only slide on Scala I'm going to show you. So, so now, we, when we want to create this actor, now we have defined it, now we want to create it. First, I want to say a, a few words about that. Actors are extremely lightweight. They don't consume any resources at all except memory, unless they are scheduled by the schedule to run and to do the actual work. Okay? This means that you can run millions of actors concurrently just on a, on a, on a MacBook Pro. Right? I can run easily, like, let's see, I don't remember, four, it's four gig of RAM, like four times two gig of RAM at least, or four times two, two like eight million actors easily on this, on this little machine. And this gives you a way of <coughs> modeling things that are very hard to model using, <coughs> sorry, losing my voice, this was damn slot. <coughs> So uh, this, this gives you a way of modeling things that's really, really hard to model using. You're using threads, for example, uh, because everything is completely event-based. Event so in actors, I can also say that actors are, as you see, they are like, in, they're realized as, as classes in Java, and they are very much like objects. But don't, don't be fooled, they have different semantics in how, they, in, how, in how they behave. They just superficially look like objects, which makes it so sort of easy to understand them. But it can also be, be so, so sometimes be so, so surprising in how flexible they are and how, and how they actually interact with each other. Okay. So now if we want to create an actor, the first thing we do in ACA is that we create an actor system. So actors are never used alone almost never at least. They always comes in systems in which they interact with each other. So first you create an actor system. That's sort of your, you can look at it a little bit like the bean factory in spring if you want. Or your EJB it's a context or yeah. There's a little container that runs your, your, your actors and manages them in an, in, an in an efficient way. So out of this system then we can create our first actor. So we say system.actorob, they we pass in the configuration. There's something we call props, to like continue with the actor theme. And then we give it a name, right? So names are important in actors. Names are used for a lot of things. They're used for finding out other actors. They're used in the configuration file to configure this actor to behave in a specific way, to be deployed in a specific way, and so on, okay? So, that, so now we have an actor, As, and you can see here also, here we create an, oh no, it works. Here we, here we, here we create a greeting actor, but out here is no, is no greeting actor coming, out. What's returned is an actor ref. There's a reference to a running instance of the thing I just created, okay? And the beauty of this is that this can mean that I'm creating a local instance here, 
can also mean that I'm actually not creating a local instance because this, this, this thing is defined to run in, in, on another machine in another data center in Brazil, for example. And what comes out there is the same actor ref. It just, now just happens to communicate with the actor in the, in, in the other data center. Okay. So <clears throat> actor, they, they form hier hierarchies, at least in ACA. We, we made this very clear. Okay. So we have one invisible top-level actor called the system guardian. And this ties into how the failure model works as well, which is very important. But, so if, if, if you create now an actor f out of the system, what you do then, then you could create a top-level actor right on underneath the system guardian. Okay? But then within the actor, if, if I'm in the, the body of the actor, in the receive block or in the constructor, we have something called the context. If you now create an actor out of the context, you don't create a top-level actor. Instead, you create an actor that is a child of you. Okay? And that can continue. So this way, you can create you, your, 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 your actor system, your application, usually tends and should look like, look like a hierarchy. Right? And actor name resolution uses this, because this looks very much like a file system, right? We have, we have directories, and then we have the leaves and stuff like that where we put data. And we use <clears throat> the same sort of analogy when we actually reference actors. So, so the top level actor is called slash foo. His child called slash foo slash a, for example, and, and so on. <clears throat> okay? We even have things like actor selection. So you can do like foo slash star to get all the children, selection of all the children. You can do foo, you can do like dot dot slash star to get all my siblings, like one level up and then all the child, including myself, and so on. So you, you can actually navigate and, find, find, and, and, and traverse actors and find, find out about them. So using sort of file system kind of, 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 of analogy, okay? So now we're going to take a look at, this, at, at the second primitive, sending messages. <clears throat> sending messages is what you use for communicating with actors. Okay? And message send is asynchronous and non-blocking. If, if they say that is, you have synchronous message send, message send an actor, then, then it's not a true actor system in my view. This is this, because this is the thing that makes actors so appealing to me. This is what makes them completely event-based, reactive. If an, if an actor system, if, then if there's currently no messages flowing in the system, nothing happens. No resources are consumed, more than memory, of course. Okay? So, in a way, as I say, so an actor is completely passive until, until a message is, is, is sent to it. So, in a way, messages are like the kinetic energy in an actor system, right? This is what actually makes motion, makes something happen. Okay, so an actor can have a lot of built-up buffered energy. It might be ready to do a lot of great stuff, right? But nothing will happen until a message, message is sent to him, trigger him to do something. And then he does it, and then he goes back to sleep. Or he's suspended. There's no thread sleep here. So that was definitely no thread park. So... Uh, so, 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 like, messages is what makes things happen, okay? And how do we send messages? We have a method called tell on the actor ref. That's how you communicate with an actor. So you send him a message by passing in the message into tell, telling the actor to do something. And this tell method returns immediately. It, it doesn't wait like, for the guy to actually receive the message, open it up, do something, and then he returns, right? He returns immediately. <clears throat> so he can actually use his thread to do some more useful work than waiting for the other guy to be woken up and do something. And this, this makes actor communication extremely efficient. Okay? There's also, uh, we've seen that there is a need to, to often m sort of uh, uh, emulate, like request reply. I send a message and I, get, and, and I get a reply. So we have something, I'm just going to cover that here today because it's like too, 
I don't really have time for that, but I was going to tell you that there, there is a whole bunch of patterns in ACA that you can import, and, and, and we have one pattern called ask, okay? That means you can ask an actor something, and then you actually get a response. There's still no blocking. Instead, what you get immediately is a future. Future is a promise that something will eventually happen. We hopefully we all believe in the future, hopefully, right? So eventually something will happen. But the good thing is that we can that what we are allowed to then is actually to set a timeout. So we don't wait in the in the in indefinitely for something to happen. Actors sit right by beside a full blown a very standalone, I would say, computing model around futures. This, this is not like your Java Util concurrent, crippled, poor future, right? I can't hardly walk. It's, 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 it's a much more interesting, uh, appealing API that's completely asynchronous, lockless. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can register callbacks and be notified when you, when you want them to happen. I'm not going to talk about it, I'm just mentioning it now. And that ties into the ask model, the request reply model. But the essence is tell. Just fire or forget. Okay. So a full example now of a, of a working actor system, <clears throat> not very useful one, but still is here. So we create message, message in the, or the public, is, is the public API for the actor, you can say. We create the actor, we create the actor system. Out of that, we instantiate the actor, we get an actor ref back. We can use that actor ref to communicate with the actor. It's basically how it all works. <clears throat> so. Let's say that we, we run that with no configuration file at all. Then it will all run in process on your single machine, okay? On the, in a single JVM, naturally. But now let's say that we are, we're not interested in that. We actually have a need for, for, for running it on multiple machines for scaling out reasons. One CPU can, or, or whatever, quad, quad core, 12 core box can't handle the load. We need more power. What we can do then, we can feed it with this configuration file, okay? And here you can see, here I'm using this greeter name, the name that's here. Okay, it's a top level actor, it's, that means that it's slash greeter. So I'm writing a deployment configuration here for the greeter actor, and here I can just say that I want that to be a remotely enabled actor. It doesn't have to run remote, it's just enabled for, 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 remo for remoting. And there I give it, sort of the, 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 the directives for the topology, you can say. So I'm using the ACA protocol. I'm saying I'm interested in running in the my system. S system. If we step back again here, oops, sorry. You can see here that that's a system there. So names are important. Names matters. And then I say in that system, that, that system should run on a specific machine that can be a machine name that you can find through DNS, or it can be an IP address. It just needs to be reachable, right? And then you give it the port. And what's nice now is that when we do actor of on this machine here, if this machine one is the guy over there, then he will be automatically provisioned there and instantiated there and I will communicate with him instead of some, lo in some local guy. All right, so it's all externalized out. <clears throat> that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, there, an, another thing that we sort of built out a need is, is the need for, for routing, for, for balancing load. Load balancing is usually something interesting. Perhaps doesn't matter that much on a single machine, but as soon as you start running things in the cluster, it's very important, okay? So, so we, we have a few ways you can do that. You can do that programmatically in the file, or when, when you instantiate. Here we use the props object, you can see. So the props is the configuration. It's an immutable configuration object that you can extend like this, using like a fluent interface. <clears throat> you can store away, like it's thread safe and everything. So you can use this props object to say, okay, I now I want to create something that could be routable. So I want to I want to create a with router and then a round robin given the, the number of instances. Now, this actor ref that comes out here is not a single actor ref any longer. It's an actor ref that rep represents 
number of instances, numbers of actors running, either locally or if I've configured it, running on different machines. Okay? That's nice. You can also add on top of that a pool. So you can say, okay, I, I want to have a, a lower bound and an upper bound, and I want to feed that into my router. And then it's like a then it can work with resizing himself uh, depending how much is needed. And you can also do all of it, this from the configuration if you want to have your code clean. Okay, it might be that you didn't know that you needed a router. This this might be a contention point that you weren't aware of. Then you can do that later. In a year later, whenever you like, you say, now I'm configuring this to be a router. And what's even inter more interesting is, 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 is that the system can itself transform himself to a router using the become, the third directive I'm going to talk about in a second. Okay. So become. Become is the thing that might be the hardest thing to wrap your head around when it comes to the actor model. It means that I can redefine my behavior at runtime. Okay. And, and I can't do that for the current message I'm processing. I do that for the next message I'm, I'm receiving. Okay? And in the way, if you look at it from the type system, like Java or Scala or something, <clears throat> it's really as if the, if, the, if the actor changed not only the interface, but also the implementation. It really becomes something completely different. Right? It can have the same interface and the different implementation. It can also change the complete interface. The interface then being the messages it can, receive, it can react upon. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and these behaviors can be stacked. They are stacked if you, if you want them to. So they can be pushed and popped. Okay. So the question is, why would I want to do that? This sounds like some, yeah, some, some just geekiness completely goat out, going out of control, right? I mean, we can do this. Yeah, let's do it. Now, it's actually something that's pretty useful. I, have, I, I, I tend to use that a lot. <clears throat> One example is, for example, I might, have a very, I might have an actor that I didn't think was going to be very highly contended, but I want to prepare for it for, to do something. What I can do then, I can have that actor, when it detects that it's getting X number of messages per second, it transforms himself into not being one single running instance. Instead, he, he spawns up five or 10 or 100 instances of himself. And he takes the role of being a router instead. The guy using this actor, having my actor, the actor ref that points to him, have no idea. He doesn't know. Right? That means that also when, when load goes down, he can see he shut these guys down and say, okay, I'm, 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 not, I'm, be, I'm becoming a single running instance instead. I use it a lot to implement like, finite state machines. For example, I might start with an actor that, 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 can, that can only receive one single message, and that's the initialization message, for example. Okay, whenever I, 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 whenever I, I get that, then I'm redefining my, my behavior into running. Okay, so now I'm in a running state. I might be able to... Rep so, sorry, I need to hold it like this. I'm, I'm, I might be, then I sort of can respond to whatever kind of messages that, that implements the work that I should do, right? And then I might, uh, one of these might be suspended. Then I can read, when, when I get, get that, I redefine myself to suspended state. Then I, with only one message I can re receive or react upon, and that is resume. And then I resume, I'm going back to here. And then I perhaps have one, one that says stop, and that's the, that's the end of it, or end of it, right? So it's a very easy way to implement a finished state machine in which way the interface and the, and the state is completely coupled and it's extremely clear which each, what, what kind of responsibilities each, each state has. One, another thing is like graceful deg deg degradation. It might be that when an actor can't keep up, he doesn't want to transform himself to a router because that will just trickle down. It will just get like cascading failures. Your system just can't handle more. Then it can do things like, for example, uh, throw an exception. Whenever, whenever new messages come, comes in, he might just drop them on the floor. It might feed them to, to our dead letter, actor FQ that we have. So you can, you can like look them up later, what, what, what happened. Or, or you can notif notify, perhaps, I don't know, send an email, I'm overloaded. He can transform himself to do something completely different, meaning I'm overloaded. And what that means, I mean, that's up to you, right? 
and then the system goes down, low goes down, it can't go back to, to original behavior again. It might be that you, that, that you have a whole bunch of different servers that, are, that all run completely empty actors with just one single message that they can receive, and that is initialize, initialize uh, some worker, for example. And then you can send the full implementation up to these guys. You start sending work out to them, you get the result, and when you're done, you, you, you just let them redefine themselves back to completely empty, and another guy can come in and start sending up their implementation to these guys, use them, and so on, right? It's also a very, very nice way of, of having completely generic workers in running in EC2 or on a data set or whatever. So there are many ways that I find this very useful, <clears throat> and it adds to this thing that actors are very dynamic, and they're not anything that we're used to, really, if you work in Java or C++ or some very, very static. That gives them extreme loose coupling, right? You can do basically anything. So the way you do it is a bit ugly in Java. In Scala, it's basically just a one-liner because Java, because Java doesn't have, have full closures yet. In Java 8, it will be slick. But now we ha you have to pass, create this anonymous class called procedure in which you have the apply method, and that's where you add your new receive, okay, your new behavior. Okay? And we have different versions of this procedure. So you can actually pass state from the original behavior in here. So you can, you, can, you can actually have state and behavior follow if you want and so on. And then we have a other method called unbecome that sort of pushes the stack, no, no, sort of pops the stack. So you can push behaviors and pop behaviors. Okay. So that was what I was what I want to talk about become. The, the third thing, supervision, is another very interesting thing that I think we should cover. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, when I'm out there I'm, as a consultant, I mean, often, unfortunately, surprisingly, a lot of custom, you know, users, they don't really have a plan for failure. Maybe it fails, yeah, that's, hap that's part of life, right? Let's just reboot, reboot, right? But I think there is a better way of dealing with it, and that is by, by seeing that failure is not an exception, right? It's not something special. Things will fail. It's just part of life. And it's better to, be, to see it as just a natural state in your application's life cycle. Things start up, things run for a while, things fail, okay, no big deal. Things start up again and they run and they fail. And if you start thinking of things like this, thinking about, about it like this, then, it, then it's a lot less stressful, I think. Right? Then you can instead build systems around premises that actually hold. Okay, so fa I think failure recovery in C, C++, and C Sharp, etc. It goes something like this, okay? And this is, I think, the essence of the problem. Is that is that you're giving a single thread of control, right? A single thread run here that does, you, you do your computation in, 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 in a thread. Then if this thread blows up, what happens? You're screwed, actually. Because, I mean, the only thing you will see if this, if this thread blows up, if you don't use any, any error recovery, like you will see a stack trace all the way up to your Java util concurrent executor service, right? And then it's silence, right? Your customer might start complaining, go into the logs and say, okay, something failed. I had no idea, right? So if to avoid this problem, what you have to do is that you have to do all the error recovery and explicitly in the same context as you do your work, right? Because if you lose the thread, you're gone. Game over, okay? And what's even worse, right, is that, as I said, I mean, there's complete silence. There's no way of finding out. There's no way to, like, subscribe to, 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 to failures in another thread. If I'm running here, I might want to know that my buddy here died, right? I, I can't do that because exceptions don't propagate across threads. Just go all the way up and gone, right? And what this gives you is a very defensive way of, of, of programming style. You have to actually tangle your business logic with your error handling all the way through. I mean, so you get tangled and scattered code 
with, with error recovery, business logic, error recovery, business logic, all over the place, right? And this is completely wrong, I think. We can do much better than this. And, and actors try to do that in a way I think is a lot better, at least. There might be even better ways that I haven't found out yet, but actors tries to address this issue. <clears throat> and it has this philosophy, just let it crash, okay? And well, so they, 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 what embodies this is basically that it's not an exception that things crash. It's natural. Just let it crash and deal with it instead, okay? So, this brings me to the fourth thing, supervision, okay? So, in supervision, we, we, are, we have a me me mechanism to, to, for, 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 for a certain actor to manage an other actor's failure, okay? So, we actually get this thing that I asked for, that we can get that failure can propagate across components running in different threads, even running on different machines. I can even find out that something went bad on, on an, in another box, in an, in a, in a, another actor running in, a, in another machine, right? And what's even nicer about this is that all this is completely declarative. You know what de de declarative means? You, you, you say what should be done, not how, right? There's no imperative code. I mean, try catch and then I have to add some code to do stuff there or how should deal with failure. There are some certain failure classes and, 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 and how you should react upon those and then you can mix and match those in a very slick DSL instead. And what's even better is that your, your, your business logic running over here is completely clean of error handling because it's not his job to do that. He just does the work. If he dies, oh, whatever, fine. A notification will be sent to the guy created him. Okay? So here is where it ties into this, this, this hierarchical structure. That we have child, parent, child, parent, child, parent. Okay? And, and, and which you, one way of envisioning the way you think about building systems like this is you think about them like, like an onion. So if you have critical state, critical things that you can't lose, right, very important, sort of the essence of your application, what you do, you put that in, in, the, in the center of the, of the onion, you can say. And then you layer layers of defense to protect yourself, right? So the essence is that if, if I'm holding on to something I can't lose, some state I can't lose, I never do that work or do dangerous work myself. Instead, I create another actor, I delegating that to him. He can go off and do the dangerous stuff, right? He might blow up or whatever, I die, or get like, very badly wounded. But it doesn't matter because I'm fine. I can just create another guy, right? Have him run, try again. Might go better this time. And you can declare to configure things that things fail too many times, you might take another course of action. Starting him on another machine or doing some reporting that something's completely wrong with these guys, right? And the, the work they should, they're about to do it doesn't make sense. Or, or whatever, right? So, so, you, so you tend to get a system that looks like this. We talk about something called the error kernel. And that is where you put your, your state you just can't lose. And then you build layers of defense. And the poor child, I should say child, the poor bastard is running down there. I mean, minions is better to call them, right? Else I get sued for, for like, yeah, talking about child molestery or something. But <clears throat> so these minions here, right, they are the guys that should do the most dangerous work, the one at the bottom. And sometimes they might fail, right? They might die. What's going to happen then is that a notification will be sent up to his parent and he can take action. He can restart him and try again. Okay? It might be that a certain group of actors together implement some sort of service. They are, they are implicitly coupled. Then the supervisor can say, okay, I want to wipe all of them and restart and hopefully things go well. It might be that, 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 that the error recovery sort of me mechanics or whatever it's, a, it's above a certain actor's pay grade. He might say, I don't have the knowledge or the, or the actual, I'm not, have, I don't have the permission to do anything about this. Then it will escalate up. Think about, for example, out-of-memory error. 
no act, no actor in the in the elite whole hierarchy can 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 deal with this probably in a good way. It will escalate all the way up. It will hit the error kernel. Your whole application will probably fail, right? And then it's really nice <clears throat> that these things can span nodes, right? So even if if the whole thing failed on one node, a notification will be sent to the guy that created him on another machine, and he can continue. <clears throat> this might look like a single point of failure if you think you have one single top level actor just starts creating. And that's where the clustering module comes in that we are just releasing now to, uh, in, as, as part of 2 on. So, when you create an actor using an actor context, you create a child and then you automatically supervise him, right? That's like default. And there is a default supervision strategy how that should be handled. And that's usually a good default. So normally you don't need to do much than just create him. Right? But you can also override it. And, and we have a little DSL that looks also a little bit ugly since we don't have like lambdas in, in, in Java. But basically you create a new function and in this apply method this is like plumbing. But here you have a DSL. You say if I get an arithmetic, arithmetic exception for example, then I want to resume my actor. If I'm getting a uh, null point where I restart or else, else I escalate, for example, I send it on to my parent and hopefully he, he can deal with it and, and so on. So, so the full, uh, sort of, a full blown example of it will be something like this. I don't have to write this code unless I, I really, I really I'm, I'm have specific needs, right? But I can do it. So that's from the supervisor's perspective. From the supervised actor's perspective, you might, might, he might also need to do something. He might need to clean up resources before he's killed by the supervisor. And he might need to re reinitialize himself before, after he's restarted, for example, or after he's resumed, or before he's suspended. So there's a lot of different callbacks you can hook into that you can, that you can override and add additional behavior. For example, pre-restart and post-restart here. And here you get the calls of why you were restarted. And you can optionally pass in the more, 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 more state and so on around. So that's a very nice way of doing it. <clears throat> uh, ACA, ACA 2.1, this is all ACA 2.04, for example. ACA 2.04 is what is the latest stable release. But we have release candidate 4 of ACA 2.1 is out. And uh, part of that, we have, we have, we have a clustering module that, that we, 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 we mark that as experimental because we want feedback. We, we, we want to release early and, and we want people to actually tell us what they, what they want and if it solves their problems, etc. So please try this out, give us feedback. But in essence, what it does, it, does, it, that it allows you to connect all these actor systems on, the, on, 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 all, on a whole bunch of machines into a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, so gossip-based cluster, cluster. And we have cluster membership, we have things like leader election. We, we use that to do things like adapted load balancing. So all of the routers you saw, we have round robin, consistent hashing, and uh, random, and all kinds of routers. <clears throat> we also starting, we also we, we have like least CPU, least memory, and so on, so start looking at runtime metrics and, and do the routing based on that. All of those can be cluster enabled, right? But just a single line of configuration file, which is, which is, which is, which is very neat. Because then you, can, then you can have, then you can just con, uh, completely uh, dynamically just add nodes to a cluster. And these routers, we see, oh, I have new nodes here, I'm just spawning up more, more, more actors over there. And if you start taking them down, they will detect that, oh, my actors here went away. I'm going to, or about to go, leave. I'm going to move them over here instead, and so on. So you can really get this elasticity. That, that's, that, that's very slick. And the only thing you need to do to enable clustering is you, is you write this. We have something called seed nodes, very similar to the, to the Cassandra system of how to, to bootstrap the system. It's just, it's just small plumbing. But to, but to get a cluster router, you just have to do this. You, you, you remember this piece of configuration file, right? For, for configuring a router, you just add a cluster section here. Say so you, you enable that, and, and then you have a whole, whole bunch of different th ways you can configure. 
how we should behave in the, in the cluster env env environment. And finally, I, I, just, I just want to say one thing, and that is <clears throat> we, ha we have something called the type safe console. And, and, and we have sort of, we have sort of like a commercial, like, like sort of beta program for our, for our users up till now. But in the next release of the TypeSafe safe stack, we will make this available uh, free for developers, right? So you, you can use it whenever you like, just because we use it a lot as ourselves. And it's a really nice way to, to peek into what's going on into an actor system. This is, this, is, this is a screenshot of it. You can, for example, see your different nodes here. You can expand on the nodes. You can see runtime metrics here. And then you can get the full system overview. And you can zoom in on a specific actor. Uh, you can first zoom in on the dispatchers. And the dispatcher runs and the number of actors. You can zoom in on a specific actor. You can see um, all kinds of stats. And these, these two screenshots are a little bit old. But the latest version it r runs right there. So if you want to take a look at it, go to console-demo.typesafe.com. It's a very nice way of like, understanding your actor system, really see what's going on, which messages flow, where contention points are, etc. And there's much more in ACA. I haven't had time to go through all this, right? But we have a great test kit. We have a durable mailbox for, for more guaranteed delivery stuff. We have PubSub. We have an event bus you can use fully enabled, subscribe to events flowing in the system. Micro currently you can run it as a, like a mini app server if you like. We have all kinds of also integration modules. You can integrate with CRMQ. We have a great cam, Apache Camel module to like make actors your endpoints. So you can communicate through an actorish way out to whatever, right? And some, and some more stuff as well, low-level I.O. and data flow concurrency and stuff. So if you want to learn more, go to aka.io. We have more than 400 pages of reference docs. We have a blog where we post things pretty frequently. That's the lettedcrash.com. And uh, if you want to learn more about the stack, about the console, or, or like commercial subscriptions, or whatever, I mean, everything, by the way, is open source, of course. I haven't said that, but they, I take that for granted. But, and it's freely available. It's on GitHub. So I also encourage you to join the community, both on the mailing list, but also we love to see pull requests. We need help. Right? So thanks for listening. I don't, sorry, I'll, I'll I, there, there's no time for questions here, but I'll, I'll, just, I'll just step outside and you can come up to me or you can come to our booth. We have a type safe booth. I'm going to hang around there as well the rest of the day. So if you have anything to, to, to talk about, thanks.